のやっぱ、some new people that haven't been here before. Welcome, Jeff and Mel. I, I see, we've seen Jeff before. Jeff, it's nice to see you again. Mel Harmon, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll probably have to jump off early to get class started, but I understand. Pop in. Cool, very cool. Uh, do you have any questions? Because actually for anybody, does anybody have any questions about, um, how the assignments are going? Because I've seen a couple of people in there posting things. Or would, would you, or maybe not, not questions or maybe some feedback about how the assignments are set up. Because this last uh, last time we were doing the um, level eighteen was the the CLOs, and I see that Elizabeth posted something here, and I also saw that Mel posted something here. Yeah, are you able to connect through to that link? Because that was one of the questions I asked in the fireside chat is that um, I just don't know how to share it. The Like, what's the best way to share what I'm doing? Let's let's check it. OK, so making me log into Canvas again, even though I'm already logged in. So I don't love that. Um, yeah, invalid. So what did you do? You you had it as uh so I created a page on Canvas and then um I have like a module in the current class that I'm teaching. Um so I have a module that's just Mel's portfolio. I created a page on Canvas and then I shared the page to Commons. Mm. Oh, it's if it's in Commons, I feel like it should right. be shareable. I wonder why that's it didn't kind of what and I, I when I posted it in commons I just said anybody in Clover Park can see it hmm. but I just I don't because you said ideally we're not just dropping a file in there and so I I was trying to not do that but I also just don't have like the bandwidth to try to learn how to do a Google website right now so yeah maybe during right, the break, right, right. I'll become a web designer but in my yeah. free time <laughs> um yeah that's a good point um, how did Elizabeth, Elizabeth, how did you share yours? Yeah, because hers, I was able to access. Yeah, I was able to look at that really easily. Elizabeth, do you, uh, do you have? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah, I'm in a very loud coffee shop, so I. Do. <laughs> So Elizabeth, I, I am also, and I was encouraged to learn that uh, people could hear me and not a ton of noise, but I don't know if that's still the case. Well, can you guys hear me? It sounds like, uh, it sounds like Elizabeth's at a party. Right now, but it, I, okay, I, sorry. I'll post in the chat. No, 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 no. It's okay. We're, it's fine. Okay. Uh, um, I think I just shared my syllabus uh, directly as a like from my OneDrive, like I don't use Google products. And so I just had it saved in my OneDrive and I shared it straight from there. Okay, so, uh, so you, okay, did, did you catch that Mel? So she, it sounds like maybe she has her OneDrive set up where if you're, I have my OneDrive also set up. So for example, if I were to go to this, this full well i have my onedrive set up on my computer so that i could um like if i let's say i'm working on this file here i can write mm -hmm. it and then um copy the link oh okay so or, if i'm creating it on one... canvas because i want to use it on canvas because that's kind of the whole point right mm -hmm. um would I just like copy and paste the page and then put that on as a link? Mm, that seems convoluted. Right. Let me let 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 me think about it. Let me think about okay. the best uh way 
if if somebody's doing it in Canvas, um, and I'll I'll get back to you. That's how I've, yeah, because that's how I've done all of them. But like, I mean, I can go in and edit it or whatever, and we can meet independently. I don't want to hog all the time. I just didn't know the best way to share it out. From no, it's it's important. I want to make sure that it's um, doable for everyone to to submit because. Um, the reason I'm picking on y'all because y'all are the only ones. Oh, sorry, Tracy. This was, uh, this is newly added. I did not see this one. Let's look at how Tracy did it here. So, no, nope, oh, let's got not. A... Nope, let's not. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> well, I put Melissa on this. I just posted my canvas. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ronald. No, it's okay. It's okay. But I, yeah, I just did it from Canvas as well because I like to work within Canvas. So I'm listening. Yeah, that was my thought. But when Ronald just clicked on that, it went through. So I don't know what. Well, I I have um, special Canvas privileges. So can you maybe, Mel, if you clicked on this link, what, what would it do for you? Let me look. Let me, I'll, I'll put it into the chat. No, I got it. I got my second computer pulled up over here. Oh, God. Now everyone's in my psych class. <laughs> what what module are we in 18 mm -hmm. this is how we grow we we, we, we yeah. share what we're working on and then we I'm gonna uh look at elizabeth's again sharing is caring sharing is caring that's right yeah, now it's saying access denied so you're good tracy i can't go in there and see it okay <laughs> so you're good for now <laughs> All right. Um, okay, I'll 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 try to figure out a more streamlined approach uh, for submitting um, it publicly so that everybody can see, and hopefully it can be integrated in Canvas because, uh, yeah, as you said, we're we're going to try to be using these in Canvas, and I really confused as to why this is not working because if I'm if I'm seeing that it in is in the Canvas Commons. It should work, but right. Let me log into. So like, like I the one I worked ahead a little bit, and like one of the assignments was coming up with like class activities, and I literally copied and pasted it into a page because it's like really great material that I want to have in the classroom for my students to use, mm -hmm. and so like I don't want to have to necessarily do it twice. I mean, I'm willing to for you guys to be able to no. see it, but. No, no, no. Just be able to share the page. Yeah. Well, the the purpose the the second part of this like um so the idea in my mind with, with the discussion board post would be you, you post the the public link here and then you would pull you you would just basically copy and paste what you did for the public post for the, the second one, right? The uh what is this? the syllabus changes you you would just write it down here again and then you would just copy and paste the journal so okay let's um let's table this for now i'll i'll try to figure out uh, a way that is is easier and then maybe we'll you know focus on going over that process at the beginning of the next uh lesson but i just wanted to see how you all would do it at first and see maybe you know how it needs to be adjusted from there so um are you gonna adjust it uh will you adjust it i haven't done it yet so i i feel like when i get in there should i wait for you do you do what you <laughs> you think me? you need you do to you? do yeah okay <laughs> and then um uh, i'm just yeah torturing. like i said i'll probably <laughs> come uh, come up with a more, you know, like structured approach to it um, for for the beginning of the next lesson. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump right into what we're focusing here on level 19. So um, I will put the link to this module into the chat. And um, for this level, we are at the uh, the the valley, the vibrant valley of the verdant vines. If y'all can't tell, I like um, 
alliteration. And I have a picture of our other uh, faculty lead here, Hannah Percour, with her nice looking doggos. There she is. Uh, I, I thought I, it would be fitting to have you here in the Verdant Vines, Hannah, because you originally were on the the green team <laughs> for the uh, for the evidence based part of the track, evidence based practices. And I know you were representing the green. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, we're still in there, too. There there's still some activity happening in there. Uh, Jaya was in there and she's been moving on. So very I, good. I, I, I've seen I've seen it on 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 the side. And so I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm crawling. I'm crawling. Keep up the good work. Crawl before You're you got a work. cheerleader, Hannah, really. She's it's great. my it's my gift, my Kulani enthusiasm. I'm I'm yes, the cheerleader. Yes, yes, I love yes, it. yes. It's <laughs> great. Every time I talk with Hannah, it's very uh happy time um okay let's go ahead and uh let's move on so uh we are talking this week about uh gagne there's a person and his name is robert gagne and we don't need to know a lot about his history um but just know that he made something called the nine events of instruction and we are going to be looking at creating a lesson plan through the lens of the nine events of instruction uh and we're going to use generative AI to help us put that together. So uh, you can look at the objectives here. I'll put them into the chat if you want to read them on your own time. Uh, if it's not too long. When did Zoom start capping how long you could put messages in there? It always hasn't been like that. Um, what we need to do, so gathering our gear for this uh, leg of our journey um, through the verdant vines. Uh, if you have your updated CLOs from level 18, those might be nice. Uh, if you don't, just uh, maybe your syllabus for the course that you're working on. Um, if you have a current lesson plan that you would like to revise, that could also be helpful, uh, but not necessary. You can make one from scratch if you'd like. Um, and then once again, any other information about your course that would be helpful to train the AI. So in the last lesson, we looked at the, or we copied the uh, course uh, with the modules, course modules, um, copy and pasted those in uh, to help make some CLOs. Um, so if you can get that stuff going, then, um, or, or get, that information in one place that would be helpful for uh, what we're going to be doing later. And maybe while you are going through that, you can um, listen to me very briefly go over um, Gagne's framework. Uh, and here it is on the screen, if you're looking. Um, I'm going to go over it quickly. I mean, OK, I'm, I'm going to exit the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't leave. Are you really going to leave? Well, I was. I'm not prepared. I haven't done 18 yet. So you don't need you don't need to do 18. Just I mean, oh it would God. be not, okay. it's, it would well, be nice I'll... if you had 18, but it's not necessary. All right. I'll follow along. I just don't like to follow along. OK, well, you can do whatever you want. I'm here. I'm, I'm hanging. Right. You, you um, but I'm going to go through. I'm going to go through this regardless for for the people who uh, who are here. So uh, these are the nine events of instruction. And um, if you're, I mean, who is anybody familiar with these nine events? Have has anybody ever seen these before, or does anybody use these in their classroom? Mel's giving me a thumbs up. Was I that a not? Tracy has not. Mel, did you use these or did you, are you just aware yeah. of them? Yeah, no, the um the Pivot Point platform that we use, they have, each lesson plan has like the, the steps listed out. It's freaking brilliant. So like it does In the, in the, the same uh, format? In, yeah. So it shows us like each, so like for each lesson that's available on Pivot Point Lab, there's like an instructor's lesson plan and it goes through each of those 
um, steps. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing and gives us activities. So that's awesome. Yeah. That is, that's excellent. I love that. Um, so I'll just go ahead and give you the basics here. Um, the, this is something that was created by someone named Robert Gagné. And uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not like something that you would need to do that you need to follow and stick adhere to, you know, step by step. But um, this, this flow of, of lesson, if you're giving a lesson or a presentation um, is proven to be pretty effective. And as someone who has used this, um, I'm familiar and have used this in the uh, elementary classroom when I was teaching uh, over in the elementary school. Uh, I found that it's it's just very nice. It's a nice way. Uh, and, and it seems like it makes sense um, uh, as you go through it. So to ju jump right into it, the first part here. Um, most of these, yeah, OK, good. Uh, Gaining attention of the student. Um, this is, you know, something like, uh, you know, very, if you think about it very simply, uh, playing a video, you know, that's, that's going to be something to grab somebody's attention. Uh, asking a, a question, you know, like a um, interesting uh, a question or, or giving an interesting fact. Um, it's basically uh, a way to hook your, your student at the beginning. Um, informing the students of the objectives. Uh, you know, letting them know the the roadmap of what you're going to be doing in that class. Uh, recalling prior knowledge. So talking about what you talked about before and maybe how that relates to what will you be talking about today um, or in that lesson. Then you're presenting the content, letting people know, you know, this is this is what we are. This is this is what we're focusing on today. Uh, and this is. Um, you know, the, what, what, what we're hoping that you can learn. Uh, the next one is um, giving them guidance is uh, more like, you know, once they, once they learn whatever the concept is, then giving them a chance to um, practice it. Uh, and then the enhancing retention and transfer, this would be, so I, I, I think of this through the lens of, uh, ESL, teaching English to students of second languages. Um, for the for the guidance, this would be I would like let's say I'm doing a grammar lesson. Um, the I would present whatever the you know topic, whatever the focus. Let's just say it's like the present simple, right? And I'm just teaching them how to you know use verbs in the present simple. Um, I would give them. Uh, you know, some practice problems that they can work on here for the, the guidance. And then um, the enhancing the retention and transfer is on here twice. Okay, I knew that something was wrong here. Hold on. This is wrong. Number six. This is, uh, this needs to be number nine. This, this should be um, giving them a chance to think of it on their own. So let me, uh, let me get this up. I think whatever place I got this from is not correct. So hold on. It's um, producing something. They're going to make it. Uh, yeah, or performance. Yeah, eliciting a performance. So I'll change this image here. Sorry, ignore number six here on this image. That is number nine. Um, eliciting a performance would be uh, like, for example, if I were to continue with uh, with the ESL um, example, this would be like having a role play and giving them a chance to, um, you know, practice or, you know, what we have practice is like you're going through the problems, but then this is where they actually get a chance to speak and use the use the language, uh, or having them write out some sort of. Um, essay or story where they're using the pre present simple. Um, so that one is eliciting a performance for number six. Uh, number seven, providing feedback, letting them know, you know, where they need to improve. And this could be, you know, in, I, I feel like number seven could be embedded in, you know, each of these stages here, uh, the, the four, five, and six. 
Um, at the end would be some sort of like a little test or quiz to just make sure that they know what they're doing. Uh, and then uh, enhancing retention and transfer. This is like where you would give them some work after, you know, I, I like to think of this as like the homework stage where here, here's what you should do before we meet next time so that you could uh, remember what we talked about in class. So uh, I think, yeah, like Jameson says uh, in the chat, on a good day, I'm remembered to do most of these, um, but this list really helps. Uh, forever and ever, you are right. Um, so yeah, I mean, like it's pretty standard uh, stuff here, but uh, it's nice here to have it on the list if the list is correct. <laughs> um, that is my quick spiel on uh, Gagné. And if you're interested in more examples or more in depth, um, I recommend just uh, searching for Gagné's nine events of instruction. And you all can find information about that on your own time. Right now we're gonna use, well, when I first created this course, it was called BARD but now it's called um, Gemini. Google rebranded their bar to be called Gemini. So I need to update all this stuff. Um, but I think the, the the links should be the same and it should work fine. Jameson. Ronald, yeah, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Go. I'm sure you're up for it. I Some students of mine who are sort of all over this, um, students, in cybersecurity and mechatronics programs who've just been like awesome um, in terms of like peer learning um, since I've just begun to introduce this in my English 101 course. Um, they, and I think this is true, but I don't really know thoroughly. They, they believe that Google Gemini is a much better or more reliable research tool um and feel more comfortable with its uh, ability to avoid hallucinations mm. um so we we based like in my introduction to generative ai and english 101 i we mostly just used chat gpt i mostly just showed them how to um generate good research terms and outlines and frameworks to help them do research but mm. i you know gave them the cursory like uh caution you know regarding like hallucinative or tory i don't know what the what that form is um uh it's issues like with, Ch with chat gpt right but like so a couple of my students were like okay but gemini doesn't do that it's awesome for um research and i so i've only looked into like a very surface level you know uh difference between the two and I'm really not so far from an expert, you know, I, I have no idea. Um, does that seem, does that seem like, uh, can you comment on that? Like the difference between uh, Gemini and GPT-4? Yeah, and when it the comes- the amount of hallucinations that you get? Well, okay, so I don't know about GPT-4 since I'm mostly just offering like free Oh, the 3. three stuff. So I guess it'd be 3.5 versus Google Gemini, which maybe is an unfair comparison, but they are both free, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Do you do you know anything about like how do, is Gemini better at research? That's a I, sort of um, broad question. From, from my, I can only speak from my personal experience and um, I, I can provide uh, uh, resources afterwards that go over the... Um, like I, I get I get emails about uh, AI stuff and I just recently got one about um, there's a new uh, update to a um, website service called Claude, which I think we will be maybe doing next week or in the next couple of weeks, we'll be looking at Claude um, and they kind of rank their uh, their responses, uh, you know, based on whatever they, however they test it, however, you know, whatever prompts they use to get. Um, and it did seem like the last time I I looked at it, Gemini, Gemini Ultra, what do they call it? 
Gemini Advanced was, according to whatever metrics they used to um, to do it, uh, was performing better than GPT-4. Uh, and then Claude 3, which is the one that just came out, the, the, the new release, uh, is outperforming Gemini Advanced. So um, I don't know what they used to test it. I don't know, you know, like I think whatever your students are doing um, is, is dependent on, you know, whatever prompts they're using <clears throat> and whatever version they're using. So like, I, I don't know. I, I also can't really speak to um, like the, the free tier versions because when I was using GPT, I was using GPT-4 mostly. Um, and then I got Gemini Advanced because I'm already uh, a subscriber to whatever the Google One thing that they had. And so um, they offered me two months for free. And I'm not sure if that was just for me because I was a subscriber. I think if, if y'all check your email, if you have Gmail, um, if you type in Gemini, you might have two months of free Gemini Advanced in there waiting for you. I don't know, but um, I got... Uh, that, that's why I'm I'm using advanced now. Um and so, so we gotta take this Claude thing seriously and learn another one now. Well, I mean <laughs> that I would say the 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 skills that we're learning can be applied to each of these different ones. And I think that we have uh this time now to learn new ones and experiment with them. So um that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into our prompts for our lesson plans that are based on uh <laughs> based based on Gagne's nine events. So I have uh in the same format as before, I've got our prompts listed here. And so uh, our first prompt that we're going to be doing today, I'll go ahead and read the instructions here. Let me go ahead and make it a little bit bigger so we can uh read it together. The following text is a prompt you'll modify, copy and paste into the bard need to change everything that's says barred. It's a problem with uh, making a course on AI when AI changes every couple of days. Um, the purpose of this first prompt is to train the large language model uh, so that it knows that we are trying to accomplish and explain this process is copy and paste the following with your data, okay? So at the beginning, remember um, when we're making the prompts, we wanna try to assign a role to our chat. Um, the first one here, you're an ex expert curriculum and instructional designer and blank faculty member at Clover Park Technical College. You will help to create a lesson plan for week two of course. I will provide you with the course syllabus and the content that you plan to cover in the second week. So um, once again, we're copying and pasting uh, this. We're going to copy and paste this whole thing um, and we're just changing the bold section here. And once again, you all cannot edit this document. If you go to file, make a copy, and then make a copy again, then you will be able to edit your own version of this if you are logged into Google. If you're not logged into Google, if you're in this document, you can um, press control A to select everything, right click copy, and then paste it into a uh, Word document, if Word is something that you are more um, comfortable with using. So keeps the most of the format the same if you do it that way. Uh, and then you can come in here and edit that. So I have an example. Oh, let me, let me uh, keep going with this thing here because I also, in addition to providing the role and the task, um, so here's the role. And then here's the task. And give me just a second here. Also have a loud play. Okay. Um, so if you look down here, your job is to create a revised lesson plan based on Robert M. Gagne's nine events of instruction and integrate. DI principles throughout. Uh, the reason I added this one because uh, that's kind of the, our focus of our college. Uh, 
Okta. I haven't tried. Hannah says, is there anybody having trouble logging into Okta? I have to log in. I can get onto Canvas on my phone, but when I try on my laptop, it says that uh, it's the wrong password. I might need to update my password, but I don't know what's going on. It's so strange. So I can't put a help ticket or anything. Uh, do you need what? Do you need something that's on Canvas that I can provide to you in the chat? No, I just no, I just like to follow along in there too. You know, uh, see what you're doing and then be in there too. So I can do it on my phone, but Okay. I'm just wondering if it's just me or if anybody else has had any issues with Okta. Anybody? Anybody? You probably all are in there. So it's it's just me. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay Elizabeth's in. Elizabeth's in and I'm in so I can only that's good okay it's me thanks guys let me uh let me give you let me give you this oh did I not put this I think I put this link in the chat but I'll do it one more time uh Hannah if you if you want to follow along we're we're actually not on canvas right now like working on canvas stuff if you want to follow along we're in this uh google doc um so everybody here is the uh the like I said the list of the nine events that I went over at the beginning um, and then I wrote down, can you concisely explain your process to fulfill this request? So once again, at the bottom, at the end, I don't want it to start doing it yet because I haven't provided the information. I will provide the class syllabus. I'm not doing it now and I will provide the content, but once again, I'm not doing it now. So to reiterate, do not. Do not put your syllabus here and do not put the content, the, the lesson plan here. Um, we will do that in the second prompt. We're priming, we're using the first prompt to prime uh, the large language model. Like we, we just wanna, we, we just wanna let it know that we are, <laughs> uh, we just wanna let it know what it's gonna be doing. And we wanna confirm that it's going to take the the necessary steps to get to whatever the um, the end goal we're looking for. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, I'm use I'm continuing the uh, the Weld 106 uh, from last time. So you're an expert curriculum instructional designer, welding technology. Uh, lesson plan for week two of Weld 106. The reason I chose Weld uh, week two is usually week one is you know kind of introduction. It's kind of like a, a different lesson than your normal lesson. Um, for me, you know, after lesson one, I try to, or after week one, I try to kind of uh, keep a consistent like layout. And so if I were to follow these Gagne's nine events, you know, I would want to try to, you know, keep that same uh, format. And so starting from the second week. Um, and then this one, you're just copy and paste just this the same way, okay? So I'm gonna, I've already written this out for the Weld 106, so I'm just gonna copy this as my first prompt. If you all go in and, um, you know, change it for whatever course and department you are working in, uh, you can do that now, <laughs> if you haven't already. And then, um, Let's go ahead and pop over to Gemini and, and see what we can see what we can get from it. See if I can change my advance to I'm going to change mine to the basic Gemini so I can get kind of similar responses. And then actually we'll do uh, I'll do both so that we can kind of compare and see what the difference between regular Gemini and Gemini advanced is. So um, before I post this in and, and start looking at the prompts on my end, does anybody have any uh, questions or is, or is anybody running into any problems? Well, I have a general question, please. Yes, go ahead. And that has to do with, um, do we have to, so we have to prime, quote unquote, AI every time we want AI to do something for us, correct? True or false? It's not going to remember our information. Um, I, I don't say, I wouldn't say you have to do it, but I, I think it's good practice every time. You I see. It. Okay. I just want, yeah. I, I just wanted to clarify that recommendation. Yeah, I I will I'll, I will also add this into that recommendation. If like let's say we have uh, right now we're going into Gemini because I want to explore new tools, but let's say you have from last week 
uh, or you know, two weeks ago, whenever we did the last one. Um, let's say you already have that chat in, you know, we used chat GPT last time. If you already have it in there, it's already primed. And so you wouldn't need to prime it again. You would just continue. You say, okay, now that, thank you. Thank you for the CLOs that you gave me. Now we're gonna be working on the lesson plan. And then you would, you would still need to explain the task, but you wouldn't need to say, you know, you are this person, right? Okay. Um, did I train you to say thank you to the AI now? You're using me. Oh, I, I, from the beginning, I've always been kind to Okay. My... It's please and thank you to the AI so that the, the guides are always with you. Yeah. Huh. I'm always on that. Yeah. Some of my, some of my students are, uh, I don't know if it's serious or if, if they're just making jokes, but they they encourage us to be very, very nice to the AI so that when the AI has total control right. over everything, <laughs> we, we're on uh, the good side <laughs> of, the, of the AI. Yeah. I agree. I mean, that, I mean, we're we're directly interacting with it. <laughs> it's going to keep the database of everything that is said. Um, okay, let's let's move on. So, uh, I, I like I said, I've got Gemini here. I hope you all are following along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste uh, what I wrote, and I want to see what the response is. So, once again, the first one, I just want to know what its process is. It is going to what its process is or what it, the process it will use uh, to do this. It's saying that it's going to analyze the syllabus and content, integrate DEI, apply the nine events. Okay. So once, once it has the information and it's added uh, the DEI component, then it's going to start putting it together step by step, refine and revise, deliver and adapt. Okay. I think it's fine. Let's see what it would do in Gemini Advanced. And I guess we could have ChatGPT as well to see just another section. Absolutely. Let's um, outline the process. Analyze. Review. Design with the framework. Okay. Seems like it's a little bit more detailed and then it's gonna iterate. A little bit more detailed, but at the same time, a little bit more precise, a little bit, I, I guess, a, a little bit more focused, if I were to say. Oh, poor chat GPT, I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> I'm I'm logged out of chat GPT. Uh, uh i've been using gemini a lot recently so okay Traitor. Um, let's but let's you, not are let's you continue. still paying for it though Ge no so what i did what i once i started using gemini advanced i thought maybe i could cancel the other save my wallet 20 dollars oh, every four. yeah all right and then here is chat gpt's response crafting a lesson plan uh Concise process process. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's going a little bit too slow for my liking. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the second um, prompt here. So prompt number two, now you provide the actual data from your course into Gemini. Remember to add parentheses before and after pasted content parentheses. Is that right? No, quotation marks, quotation. Marks before and after pasted content so the LMO knows how to parse the data. Copy and paste the following with your data. So syllabus, um, copy and paste your contents up to the policy and procedures. I know. I, I As soon as I said it, Jaya, that it was too slow, I realized we're Thank like you. way, <laughs> we're way in different territory of expertise crazy. in life. Um, but for this course, this is, you know, example. Uh, of course. Ronald, I, I'm sorry. I just want to double check. Are you recording this? I believe I am. Oh, okay. Cool. I hope I am. Yes. You I, are. I am. Thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And then uh, usually I have like a little red 
blinking thing somewhere, but I can't find where that is. So, oh, it's on my shared screen bar. Um, so content from week two, copy and paste your lesson plan or module content from week two. So if you have a lesson plan, you can copy and paste that. Um, or if you don't have a lesson plan, maybe just copy and paste what your modules are. If you don't have either of those, you just you can just say, um, I don't have a lesson plan yet. Can you help me create one? Or maybe just whatever you plan to uh, cover on lesson, lesson or week two. Yeah, whatever you plan to cover on week two. Or if you meet multiple times during the week, whatever class you uh, you want to make this lesson plan for, okay? All right, so I've got uh, my syllabus here. Um, up into the policies and procedures as to not make it too long. Um, and then I've got the content uh, from week two. And then I also put the module list here just in case because the content wasn't, wasn't too much. It was key terms and objectives. Um, but then also I wanted to include what is there in that course. Um, and then I wrote down here at the bottom, so everything's in quotation marks, right? I've got my module list. Make sure this should be in quotation marks as well. Oh, I, I know what I did. Um, I put my quotation marks starting here. I don't like that. I'm gonna put my quotation marks here, here. And I'm gonna add three for module list. Sorry for the scrolling. Everybody close your eyes as I copy and paste this stuff. Okay, so I'm selecting all this stuff. Remember, if you're copying and pasting from a Canvas module, uh, like let's say, let me get up this 106. It's a welding theory, okay. Uh, if you copy and paste it into a notepad first. So let's go down to week two. So what I did was I just went and I selected all of this from week two. If you and put it into a notepad, it will take away all the formatting. And then you, just, you, you would just select it again, control A and then control C. Uh, and so I'm going to post this in and let's see what this comes up with. This is in Gemini Advanced. I'll go ahead and throw it into ChatGPT as well. And let's let this load and then I will uh, bounce over to the regular Gemini version. So, okay. Here's a revised week two lesson plan draft integrating Gagne's nine events of instruction along with DEI considerations. So I don't have direct access to course online platform and specific grading rubrics. Please adapt this as needed. Okay, thank you for letting me know that. So uh, for this course, lesson title would be Welding Foundations and Safety. This is week two. Here are the learning objectives. Here is, for me as the instructor, what I can do uh, to gain attention at the beginning. I could start with a short video showcasing a visually interesting welding project. Uh, ask the students what caught your eye about the welding application. Encourage diverse perspectives in the discussion. So there's our uh, DI consideration. Uh, it, for informing the objectives, tell about the objectives, which are listed here. Uh, recall the prior learning. So have a group discussion. What experiences have you had with welding and similar fabrication processes? Did you notice the safety precautions? So that's the focus here of this lesson. Uh, validating student knowledge and experience related to tools. Like that. Home repairs, art projects. Uh, present the content, give some diverse examples, some multimedia and a glossary of terms. Um, learning guidance, create a flow chart or decision tree to help students visualize the process. So making process charts. Uh, safety focus, okay, elicit performance, 
the performance here would be a case study uh, and then a safety role play with a little bit of explanation here. Now, it's giving us all this stuff. And, you know, we're still in, in the stage where like, oh, this would be a lot of work to do to create all this stuff. Uh, next week, we'll look at how we can expand on each of these sections. So um, I might even be able to say, especially if I'm in, in Gemini. Actually, let me hop over into the, um, the other version of Gemini so that we're all kind of on the same ground here in terms of responses. And then let's, I'm going to, I'm going to hop back over here to um, ChatGPT and see what it does here. So ChatGPT is giving us, let's see, an activity. Show a high impact video montage of welding in action across diverse settings and industries. Highlighting a variety of people who weld. DI integration, ensure the video represents welders of various genders, ethnic backgrounds. Now, this would be difficult to find, um, but I do like that it is adding these considerations. Uh, by the end of this week, you'll grasp the fundamentals of welding process. Okay, so it gives a statement of objectives. Encourage sharing. Um, I'll I'm just going to put this in the chat, but I'm only allowed to put so much into the chat. Uh, you all have your examples, hopefully, of what you're working on that you can um, compare with. So let's see here. We've got DI principles. Activity, show a short video clip. Okay, clearly outline the learning objectives. It's similar as before. Review the shop safety practices, ask questions to activate prior knowledge. Okay. So lecturing, key terms, process differentiation, selection factors. Um, okay, so for the learning guidance here, distribute a study guide that summarizes the key concepts, recommend online resources, then we've got the performance aspect where they're working on activities. You're giving feedback throughout. They're suggesting a quiz at the end and then a question for homework for them to ponder. So that is the responses that I got from this one. I believe that is all we have for this um, interaction with creating the lesson plan. I want to I want to talk with y'all now and see how you what kind of responses you got. Is anybody in there right now in Gemini? Yeah, I'm okay. in there. Have you uh did you get anything that is of a value that you want to share with yeah, the group? I did. Um I I actually used I wanted to compare ChatGPT and Gemini, the free versions. Mm -hmm. So that was my little comparison. I'm still sort of sifting through to see the differences, but it looks like ChatGPT was, um, I would say, maybe more adherent to the prompt that I provided, but Gemini was a little bit more creative and mm. provided some... I would say uh, activities and approaches to the lesson and the material that I am valuing here and hadn't yet like used or, or thought of. Mm -hmm. So it seems like ChatGPT, yeah, ChatGPT sort of held to and integrated some of the directions I gave it in a, um, yeah, I don't know. Like a very like literal, like stricter, like, stricter yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That is and also Gemini, my experience as well. Yeah. Yeah. Gemini seems to be thinking more. Um, if I <laughs> can use such a crude sort of a a way to to explain what I'm seeing from it, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Gemini seems like it was a little bit more like helpful in terms of providing suggestions and, and kind of like bouncing ideas, mm -hmm. but it was a little bit less uh, specific and, and as you put it, literal in terms of like following maybe the directions. Right. right. That's, that's kind of a similar experience that I've had. And yeah, I think, you know, where, where it's saying, 
where it's breaking it down as here, here's the activity, here's the DEI integration, here's the statement, here's the DEI note. Like I, I, I feel like that's a very visual representation of what you're talking about where it's like, I wanted it to do this and I also wanted it to do this and here's how it's doing it. It's, it's separating, bum bum, like down, down the list where I feel like this is more integrated. I feel like the Gemini is a little bit more integrated. Okay, Elizabeth says she only uses ChatGPT. That's fine. Uh, I got valuable guidance. I feel like I'll use this in a good way to get started and then go back and edit things. So, yeah, let me um, let me just give you an example of how um, I would what I would do now that I have this thing here. So uh, this this response. It says here at the beginning, gain attention, five minutes, show a short clip, one to two minutes showcasing diverse welders. What I would do to continue this, because, you know, I don't have a lot of time to go looking through videos of diverse welders working in various industries. I'm going to see if Gemini could help. Now, I don't know if it's going to help me out at all, but uh, well, let's just see what it can do. Um I'm going to say, can you help me find a video of, and then I'm going to put this in quotation marks uh, because I'm quoting what it said earlier, a short video clip. Uh, now, the nice thing about Gemini is it's integrated with everything that, you know, Google Alphabet has. And so YouTube, I can search for YouTube videos or like it will search and sift through YouTube videos in directly into Gemini. And it does it in a, like a really nice way where I can just look at, I could just watch this video here, right? And I can decide whether- It's a tremendous amount of- This heat. video would be good. That looks like a guy just explaining things. Here's a, should you be a welder video. You will read blueprints, you need to be able to- uh, And then what's it like to be a welder video here? which I would just go through and watch these videos and see if there's something uh, something useful for me. And it doesn't look like, I will say, uh, these don't look, or it doesn't look, there is diverse representation. I don't know if this is going to, if it's going to help me find this, but I'm just going to try it. And we could use that as a as a, a chance to say that you know you try try something if it doesn't work um so right now it's saying that it's i should have a uh i should have a more targeted search so it didn't work but now it's giving me options what i can do uh to do it maybe i could just make a quick image slideshow right put up pictures of uh you know diverse welders and then just put some music on the background and then just go through the slideshow Ask students to contribute. So uh, ask them to find videos or with, um, uh, what's that called? With their permission, uh, see if you could maybe, uh, you know, take videos of them in while they're welding or whatever you're, whatever you're all working on. So, um, or maybe a video isn't gonna be the one that works. Maybe let's say, uh, I don't think a video will work. Can you give me a different um, option to grab their attention? And let's see, uh, let's see what this comes up with. Because like I said, maybe you don't want it, maybe you don't want to spend time searching for a video. Maybe you don't want to make the PowerPoint um, mystery object reveal sounds uh a little childish but <laughs> um you know cover the object have them put the hand in it, it it is a way for you know them to to be interested it's going to grab their attention if you have a mystery object uh a couple of would you rather scenario questions um uh, brainstorming challenge safe spark show that would be cool uh you know, especially for welding. Intriguing soundscape. Oh, look at this one. 
arc welding this is almost like an ASMR. So here's some different options here for, for that stage. So um, we'll continue next week uh, with, um, with that. In the meantime, before we meet again, um, same thing as last time. If you create your lesson plan, as Elizabeth did it, she did it on OneDrive, and then she just copied the link from um, what she wrote uh, or to the link to the document from OneDrive. You could do that. Um, copy and paste whatever the lesson plan, whatever output. All you have to do is just come right in here to Gemini, and I think there's a way to copy it. Yeah, if you just go to copy, and then um, you can just paste that into wherever that was. Uh, and then take some time to reflect on the process. Uh, and then you can post all of that here. And hopefully we'll figure out a good way if you want to post something directly from Canvas so that everybody else can do it. So, thank you all for coming and sticking around to the end. I appreciate you. I could stick around for a little bit of time if anybody has any questions. Oh, thanks, Ron. I got to uh, catch up, I guess, like Jaya. <laughs> but it if, was you need, if you need any help with anything, Poppy, I can help you. All right. Well, I may just not sure when I'm yeah doing it. I got to catch there's, up. I think there's a break coming up, which might be a good chance to do a little catch up. <laughs> I just got lots of lots of catching up to do with my courses and my grading, everything. It's like that. Ah. So that's what I'm my weekend will be. So thank I you. I hope you have a good weekend. I will. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Ronald, I have a little question that I'm hoping I can we can uh